Of course I don't understand, but how does Donald Trump threaten democracy? He lost the election, actually lost in 2016, but we'll let that go. And in 2020 was kicked out and whined like a cringing thing that he is ever since. But so far, we are the democracy where we were on January the 5th, 2020. He's a born crook and continued his crookery in office. He cut taxes for rich people, hardly rare for an American president. He has raped a bit, hardly rare. And he is a revolting person millions of people are infatuated with. It seems to me that a fledgling Mussolini will only be as Mussolinic as the system of government he lives and thrives in. Apparently, and it is very apparent, the American system is just waiting for any strong man and between us and that state stand arbitrary un written norms and standards. The executive branch is top heavy with power. The Department of Justice, Justice in the executive branch is absurd. These factors could be altered, only they can't by design. Even Jefferson was wise enough to think the Constitution should be, could be overhauled every 20 years or so. So what happened? The United States in her collective elitist authoritarian wisdom rendered constitutional change impossible. We are to rely on the caution and humility of our leaders. Is a vote for Trump a vote for undemocracy? Do you see what I mean? Did you hear that? I think he will lose this year. I think he's so odious and the Constitution, after enabling him furiously for some years, has drawn its toffee line. But I'm pretty sure the democracy we have is built into our institutions of government. We should be whim-proof. A vic democracy de manifests when one, the people are democratic and two, the machinery of democracy is in place and hard to move. We are not a democratic people. We hate and mistrust each other. We hate and mistrust government. We assume the powerful are cheating us because it is not very responsive to us, maybe, or most of us, not very democratic. We are an authoritarian boss culture. It is part of the dream free enterprises full of bosses. And bosses are an assumption of the powerful cheating. Are we defining democracy as the right to dissent, as adversarial to a fault, as I get these four years to undo what you did for your, your four years? John McCain said it so simply when a woman claimed Obama was a Muslim, code for her, and he said, no, he's a hardworking American who loves his family with whom I disagree. Oh, and I believed him. So did you. The machinery of real democracy is primarily the town hall and the citizens' assembly. The will, the ideas, and the earnest attempt might be in place. But habit is formative. Being told this is a democracy means there is a very thin wall between it and that. The country born in an insurrection might have decided on January the 6th another was necessary, was in fact a fact of democratic life. The religious brew, which seems to be a fact of life here, the democracies I have lived in seem to be almost religious, particularly America, though maybe labor too, sectarian, irreconcilable, which may be natural, but as surely as maybe needs acknowledging and guarding against. Religion's habit of dehumanizing non-believers fits very nicely and creepily into American politics at the moment and is its destruction on both sides. <laughs> I guess that this reality, this adversarial, disrespectful, wingnut, libtard contest is the one we have and accept. <coughs> it was probably <coughs> ever so, except there was a snugger community over the ocean who all went to the same college at Oxford at the same time, but differed only as if in temperament. This is actually true of English political participants, except a few might have gone to Cambridge. When this reality shifts, as in America, a failed insurrection is the least of your challenges. When the ruled become rulers, the Mystocles giving the votes to the oarsmen of Piraeus, who defeated the Persians at Salamis. This did not occur to the English until 1919 and was done with grave doubts. There is a way to go. There was a way to go on January the 5th. And where there is a will... Dot, dot, dot. When Donald says, I am your voice, I am your retribution, have we decided that roughly 40 million Americans are irrational babies in need of that kind of representation? I think we have decided that. At our peril, is he the hearer of the unheard, or is Nancy Pelosi a good listener? 
The founding documents are cleverly undemocratic. Not one founder wanted universal suffrage, let alone universal participation, and old elitist habits die hard. They are some of our oldest. They are Roman, at least. Tom Paine, perhaps, but he was marginalized. It is reassuring that there is an ordinary person cult, except there is no such thing as an ordinary person. It's a cliche. Fascism relies on the great man theory. As long as you drive that Mercedes, fascism will flirt with you. One woman, one voice might be my motto, and that voice is a lot more articulate and louder than the ballot. A mute X every two years will reveal itself as a sop sooner rather than later. Trying to amplify her voice is a very good idea. Censoring social media is not. Thankfully, it is here to stay, and the theocracy that demands control of expression is abated. I'll not like all that is said and concluded on social media, but that is democracy, dears. Since the great lurch right is happening all over the West, which in the West is simply reverting to the old days, making indefensible great again, we should be looking at the world, we should be looking at the people, not the knobheads they manifest as leaders, but we'd rather not because we disdain them so. They are Oxford less, they are Cambridge short. They must be susceptible to the extraordinary powers of Donald and Victor, really, not the blinding inspirational intellect of Keir and Joe and Nancy. What is going on in America for real? We're all may, we're, we, we all made it happen. Why is income inequality so great in a country that values income above everything else but babbles about e equality? Do we think Trumpism will go away when he goes? <clears throat> there is a lot of hate out there. Whence? When I see and hear Democrats rationalize, even romanticize the murder in Gaza, I see a lot of historic territory covered, the birth of this nation, the identity of this nation, that it has never admitted its supremacist settler colonization, never addressed it, simply rolled along, grinding up the ancestral. When Dems talk gooey-eyed about sacred democracy, making Donald a demigod is easy. Democracy is exactly not sacred. Equality is not endowed by a creator. God had nothing to do with your Oscar win. That was your cameraman. If the Supreme Court seems a little wobbly for the left, it is heavenly for the right. As long as we tolerate the sliver of separation twixt church and state, this will be a risk. If the Khan was not so resistant to change, if it were more democratic, in fact, and less worshipped, we could fix the Supremes. But since we don't try, my conclusion is we'd rather not. And the Electoral College stays in place, without which Trump would be moot. Gerrymandering rumbles on, campaign finance stays in place, voter suppression seems awful simple to do. The individual state's rights to oppress its own citizens has been challenged when, has not been challenged since when. It's an awful conundrum when a man as limited as Trump can so easily threaten the institutions that you swear protect a democracy, a great democracy. I have to wonder, were the founders serious or doing what many did after the Enlightenment and the rights of man, fake it? If there is a Western lurch to the populist right, is that not a, sh a shaking wand at the elitist left? I've seen zero evidence the elitist left wants more democracy. They want the one we have that is so easy to threaten. And they don't want the populist right to have their say or day. I would suggest there is nothing righter than the democratic donor base that threatened to withdraw their gifts if Bernie were even allowed to advance in the primaries. And I have no idea why the Democrats are so keen on dead Ukrainians unless Hollywood sent them a Disney script about the Ukrainian democracy. The Western impulse to spread democracy is a terrible lie. They don't have it to spread and it is markets they crave, not a free self-determining Nicaragua. See their advertisings. We have no unions or environmental regulations invest in us. My liberal heart is not bleeding here. That is what you are spreading and your arms industry thrives on these exports. Mm.